song. Is this on too? No, that one isn't, but it will be now. <clears throat> okay. All right, can you shut this one off then? Get it out of the way? I, uh, I don't really like holding the mic, but I don't like being stuck here either. Um, we're good? We're good. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We ever get that other mic fixed, it'd be wonderful because I feel like a rapper here with this mic in my hand. Um, so we agree you need to be empty to be filled. Amen. Okay, we're in agreement? Fantastic. Alright, let's, let's get into the scripture here. Matthew 28, let's begin in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. Why do you suppose they doubted? How could you doubt at this point? It's possible, right? The Bible says it happened. Correct? Some pretty, pretty influential people here, aren't they? Amen. Yeah. I want to read you a little something. Well, let me hang out here for that. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. Shouldn't be any doubt. All power. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Doubt closes the door to blessings. Amen. Closes the door. But some doubt it, it says, so it will ever be. There are those who find it hard to exercise faith, and they place themselves on the doubting side. These lose much because of their unbelief. If they would control their feelings, Control their feelings. How about that one? Controlling feelings. Um, people let their feelings run away with them a lot, don't they? Amen. Yeah. What's the seat and authority of the mind? Is it in the feelings? You think feelings have something to do there? What, what, what attracts people to do things if it isn't feeling, right? Just putting it out there. You know, it's, it's frustrating when you, when you help people and um, they think the worst of you, right? You know, think about God. He does what? Everything for you. Right? Amen. Yeah. Pays your bills, your water bill, your electric bill, all that thing. Everything. Your car. <laughs> and then if something goes wrong, you blame him. Right? That's the way we are. Everybody's quick with feelings. But it says here, if they would control their feelings and refuse to allow doubt to bring a shadow over their mind, over their own minds, and minds of others, how much happier and more helpful they would be. They close the door to many blessings that they might enjoy if they would refuse to place themselves on the doubting side. What do you draw from that? People blowing up my phone at this time. Everybody that knows me knows I'm in church. 
why would you blow my phone up? <clears throat> because feelings, right? Mm -hmm. I gotta get a hold of this guy. It doesn't matter if he's in church. <sighs> the struggles of life on this planet. Someday, someday, everything will be perfect. There will be no more sin. There will be no more stress. You know? Can you imagine plucking a flower and it doesn't die? Mm. I can't comprehend that. I, I try to imagine it. But every time I pluck the flower, a couple, two, three days, they just, it's all done. Imagine, I, I just gotta imagine, like in heaven, it has to be you pluck the flower and you just, boop, put it back down. Put it back down. Right? It's pretty amazing. God is pretty amazing. And he's done amazing things for us. I, uh, let's go to Psalms. Psalms this should be an easy book to find, right? Go to the left. Psalm 7. Psalm chapter 7. Y'all there? Okay, I'm going to read in verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the heart of and reigns. The heart being the mind, right? The reins being what's the desires. The part that makes everything go. Right? The drive of the man. The seat of its authority. And when I say men, please, I mean women too. We're not that childish. <clears throat> Although the world thinks we are. And if we don't control our feelings, but allow people to tell us what to think, we will react to everything rather than respond as Jesus taught us to do. Correct? There's, there's a little, there's some pearls in there. Psalms 26. Psalm 26, in verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. If God isn't driving a vehicle, we're in big trouble. Amen. Big trouble. Because we always want to go in the wrong direction. Just stop.
In the Strong's definition of this word, it says in the feminine, only in the plural, a kidney as an essential organ. Figuratively, the mind as the interior self. The seat of emotion and affection. I think we need to turn that over to God. Amen. Because there's a lot of guys and gals sitting in prison because they were holding the reins. Amen. If it wasn't for Jesus, some of us would be there too. Amen. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 11. Verse 20. But, O Lord of hosts, that judgest righteously, that triest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I revealed my cause. What do they call Jeremiah? The weeping prophet. The weeping prophet. Hmm? Do you think the weeping prophet had a little bit of emotion? What was he calling for there? What was he calling for? For Jesus to steer the car. Amen. In our day, drive the car. Right? Amen. Turn to Jeremiah 17. That's a lot more familiar chapter with you. Oh. Yeah. Jeremiah 17. Let's begin in verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. But, here we go, thank God for verse 7, right? Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Does that sound like something? Sound like Psalm 1? Yes. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's where we want to be. Huh? No matter what comes, no matter cold or wind, or, it doesn't matter. Heat. We stand firm in the Lord. Because why? Because He holdeth the reins. And if He holdeth the reins, you can't be defeated. It doesn't matter what comes your way. Exactly. Let go. Let God. That's where that comes from. Right? In verse 9, it says, The heart is what? Deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And why is the heart so desperately wicked? Because we've been given this... <laughs> Evil nature, right? That if it wasn't for God doing supernatural work, we'd be hopeless. Hopeless. Verse 10 says, The Lord searcheth the heart. It says, I try the reins. This is the Lord. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to um, Job. I believe Job is after Psalms, correct? Before. Before Psalms. Okay. I knew it was right there. Touching it somehow. 
Let's go to Job chapter 20. Yeah, chapter 20. You know, here's, here's Job, the book of Job. This poor fella is going through it, right? I mean, he's, he's just going through it. And he's got these three wonderful friends that are being friendly for seven days because they come and they just sit and shut their mouth. That's how we show friendship when somebody's struggling. You ever go to a funeral? What do you say? You know, you see people come up and they say lots of things. I think the wisest of us are the ones that say nothing. You know? And just hold them and hug them. Let them know you're there. You know? Because there's really nothing you're going to say. Um, I did really learn the word so. I'm sure I've told a few of you this, but some might not know. I did the, the word so, I realized when my sister died, when she was 13, and I was holding my mother up on the one side, and my other brother was holding my mother up on the other side, and she could not stand. And she was just a total wreck. And um, I learned the word so, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It was like that was just being preached to me in that very moment. My grandmother lost a son, and uh, my mother lost a daughter. And it's a terrible thing to have to bury your children, especially at a young age. Um, I should probably stop here before I. Here is my mother. But um, I thank God for my mother. Anyways, <clears throat> silence is golden. Can we hear that? Silence is golden. Zophar, here we go. Then answered Zophar. 20, verse 1. Right there. Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, he says. And for this I make haste. I have heard the check of my reproach and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. And I don't even need to go on anymore with this thing. He, I mean, Zophar, Zophar puts the what for on him, right? Like he thinks he knows what's going on, and he doesn't. He has no clue. And then Job. Job answers 21. Let's start right there. 21 and verse 1. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolation. Suffer me that I may speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint to man? And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remember, I am afraid, and trembling taketh a hold on my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Job is, is struggling, right? we got to remember what the Bible says about Job. Job. It says that Job never sinned with his mouth, right? Never sinned with his mouth. Let's move on to chapter 22. When we get to Eliphaz. And the heading I have here for Eliphaz, when he's, he's going to speak, says he urges Job to repent. To repent. I wonder what Job's answer is. Let's turn to 23. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I know where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. What, what, what is his struggle here? The devil has so put this cloud that he cannot see God, right? And God has allowed this, correct? 
Let's get something straight. God is either in charge of everything or he's in charge of nothing. Do you Amen. hear that? Amen. No. God allows some things. And, it's, and he's promised us that it has to be this way for it to be finished forever. Sin. He will put it away. Verse 4, I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. He knows God, doesn't he? There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward. But he is not there and backward, and I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold. We all struggle, right? Everybody struggles. Even the greatest among us struggle with things. We need to prop each other up, brothers and sisters. The Bible promises us that the way that we are known is by our love. And not the love that you and I know, but a God that you love. Mm -hmm. That's how God's people are known. Supernatural love. Because why? Because they are dead. Right? And they have Jesus controlling the reins. Amen? Amen. We move on to chapter 25. Chapter 25, we got this one last rascal, Bill Dad. Right? He asserts that men cannot be justified before God as Adventists. Do we believe that? Hello? What are we here for? Seventh-day Adventists. What is our purpose? To, to the finish the work. Right? To vindicate God. <coughs> Correct? Amen. Okay. I'm not even going to read Bill Dad. But let's go back to Job again on 26. But Job answered and said, Hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? I think Job is asking some questions, isn't he? To whom hast thou uttered words, and whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. Amen? Amen. Let me go to 27. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment and the Almighty? Who hath vexed my soul? All the while my breath is in me, the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. Will not remove my integrity. I will not remove my integrity from me. Amen? Let's go to the very end. Job chapter 42, and it 
it says on verse 7, As it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Elphaz, the Temite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks, seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. And we skip down to verse 10, and it says, And the Lord turneth the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Amen? Amen. Is there a big lesson in that? We need to learn to love one another, even the ones that are doing us wrong. Right? And pray for them. Pray for them hard. This is amazing. I really believe the book of Job is something that needs to be studied by, the, by us as the Advent people because I think this is what we're headed for. This is where we're going to be. This is, this is how the end time wraps up. God, God has given us a typology in the book of Job. This is God's people. They are all Job's. Whether they're male or female. God's elite people will be Job. And they will finish this work. Amen. Let us turn back to Matthew where we begin Matthew, but I'm going to go to verse, chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Y'all get there to say amen. amen. All right, let's begin in verse 28. Jesus, this is red letter, right? Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. rest. Isn't that what we want? What's rest if it's not peace? Peace. Perfect peace is found in Jesus. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. His yoke is easy, but it is a yoke, brothers and sisters. Amen. It is a yoke. And you know, you, you know something about oxen when they're you, they're yoked together, okay? And there's generally one who's the leader. That would be Jesus. He leads and directs. And you, it's it's like it's like uh, Donovan and I singing. He's the one. I just follow him. You know. Um, if I can sing next to Donovan, I can stick the chest way up. You know? If I sing by myself, I'm like, mm -hmm. but next to him, I feel strong. You follow me? Same thing. Jesus, when we're yoked with Jesus, we're powerful. Psalm 92 and 12 says, flourish like a palm and grow like a cedar. Cedars dig deep. I love palm trees. Don't you love palm trees? I mean, you can go up north, but they got nice trees. But they're not palm trees. They're just, there's something about a palm tree. I just love palm trees. We've worked hard on yours. Oh, man. <laughs> we did. We did. We trucked that thing over, didn't we? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. I'm wrapping up here, y'all. 1 Corinthians. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about the other one. You know, and it's amazing what placement of a tree makes a difference. Because I, my neighbor come over and my neighbor, his, him and his wife were arguing about a tree that Ricky and I moved out of my yard in one place and we brought it to another place. And I think Ray, the husband, said uh, he, he saw us. But she didn't. And uh, he told her, says, they moved the tree. And she said, no way. I don't believe it. She did not believe her husband until she came to me. She stood right here, the three of us, and she says, Ray said, 
did you move that tree? And I don't believe it. Did you move that tree? I said, Jan, we moved the tree. <laughs> but what a difference it makes in how a tree looks, the placement. You wouldn't have, you're in a tree business, you ought to know. I mean, we had this tree in this one place forever. It's a little pygmy pond, a Robolini, if you know it by that name, whatever. Um, and when we moved it to this other place, what 